on this special GBAC and ISA say alert, I'm with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, the Senior Director of GBAC. Hi, Gavin. How are you today? Good, Jeff. Doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about something important to get right to it. The monkeypox scare continues every day. In fact, I was looking at some reports. The U.S. now leads the world in known monkeypox cases. The first case was in Massachusetts on May 18th, and now there's, what, 4,000 cases or more in the U.S. What's going on? Yes, Jeff. Um, you just have to look at the map of the U.S. states. Uh, we are nearly covered with cases now. He said, yes, he said up to 4,000, but nearly every state now has reported at least one case. And what we're really worried about, Jeff, is the fact that this virus should not be here. We have to eliminate the virus. We have to eliminate the monkeypox virus. But more importantly, there is now a risk of this virus getting into our rat, mice, our squirrel population, our rodent population, and becoming endemic. And what that means, it will stay here and, be, and we just won't be able to get rid of it. How would that happen? How would this disease become part of that population, that rodent population? Well, that's really important to understand, Jeff. Um, again, with monkeypox, you you develop these, um, you develop a rash, pustules, and the infectious virus is in those pustules, these 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 vesicles, these blisters you get on your hands and all over your body, on your face, on your legs and your arms. And that those and so when someone is infected with monkeypox, I want to highlight anything that's wet that comes out of your body. Remember, anything that's wet can, is can potentially have infectious monkeypox virus that gets into the environment, Jeff, um, on any surface, on any any substance, any material, and then that and that virus survives not just for days. It can survive up to weeks and months. There's a study that showed that it survived for 15 days just recently uh, in a room where someone was infected with monkeypox. I remember, Gavin, when this first came out, when this was first in the news back in May, so many scientists and doctors were saying it's not that big of a deal. It's not, you know, it's not a, a big concern, a health concern. But now the World Health, health Organization is calling it a extraordinary situation. So when you think about what's what we can do in the cleaning industry or, you know, as people, what would you recommend? What should we really do right now in the next weeks to come? You're absolutely right, Jeff. It's it's for hospitalizations and deaths. It's not a big, big deal. But people will have to when they're infected and they have the symptoms, they have the vesicles full of all that fluid that's infectious. They have to stay at home. And that way, that's why it's so important. It's so important to understand what's your environmental infection plan for cleaning your home, your car, for example, or any other transportation or any other rooms they've been in. So it's really important that we understand that, first of all, you need a plan, Jeff. You need a strategy. Um, how to control the measures of viral contamination for, on fabrics. It survives really well on these soft surfaces and fabrics like clothing, bedding, and even carpet. How do we clean and disinfect? Remember, we clean first, disinfect second to, to uh, destroy or inactivate the virus on any of the surfaces or even equipment. Um, and then how do we clean and, and disinfect these large environmental surfaces, the floor, the table, the couches, the chairs that we sit in? How do we? Well, Jeff, we're very fortunate that we have in the US an environmental protection agency, the EPA, who have just published a list. It's called List Q, Jeff. It has 433 products on that listed on that list. It's called EPA List Q. You can Google this. The 433 products on that, on that list will inactivate or destroy this virus. But, but, but more importantly, Jeff, you've got to follow the manufacturer's directions for use, including the concentration, the contact time, the care and handling. So again, as we've always, you and I've said this numerous times, Jeff, read the label. Check what that label says on where you can use it, on, on what sites and what surface types. You have to pre-clean the surface first with any disinfectant, because remember, dirt can keep that disinfectant from, from not working, so it has to be clean. And then you've got to follow that dwell or wet contact time. So read the label, follow the instructions. The surface should remain wet for the amount of time indicated for the disinfectant product so that it is effective. And you may have to reapply the disinfectant if that if that uh, surface dries before you reach the wet time okay well we'll keep an eye on this monkeypox situation and inform everyone of new developments gavin anything else to add before we wrap it up 
Yes, Jeff, let's think about what people should be doing because uh, many of these monkeypox uh, patients or uh, that are infected are going to be at home. So if you're at home and you live with someone with monkeypox, if possible, get them to do their own laundry. If they can't do their own laundry, then you need to wear gloves, wear a, wear a covering over your holes, your nose and your mouth, and wear um, a shirt and pair of pants that covers the skin. And as soon as you finish handling that laundry, then whatever you're wearing also goes in the laundry. And when you clean surfaces, clean and disinfect surfaces, Jeff, again, wear gloves, cover your holes, nose and mouth with a mask, wear clothes that cover your skin so there's no bare skin. When you clean and then disinfect those surfaces that are touched by the person who's sick, then put that your clothes straight into the laundry. Don't keep wearing them. Sounds a little bit like COVID in a way. The things well, we did. It's a good, good point, Jeff. A lot of the cleaning and disinfection principles and protocols, the procedures that we use to, to create safe and healthy indoor environments are very similar for many different viruses and bacteria, except the product has to change, like the disinfectant, mm -hmm. the, the chemistry in that product. But again, the, the safety of, of keeping people safe, prevent, you know, breaking the chain of infection, those principles are exactly the same. Uh, and they're never going to change, Jeff. They're going to be here forever. And again, this is a real opportune time to educate, train, so people can actually create and go about, go about their normal business every day and create safe and healthy indoor spaces.